Out in the middle of the ocean, you can find many things. Idyllic islands, glorious sunrises, a boy left adrift in a boat with only a tiger for company on the endless seascape, and not much in the way of laws. But after three weeks of starving belly and thirst, that pistol start to look real friendly. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. Ahoy and avast as we set course for five facts about international waters. Batten down the hatches, me hearties, and... That's all the pirate lingo I can handle right now. Arr! This chair be high, says I. Number five. Pirate radio from international waters brought Brit Rock to Brits. Let's have a tune. I'm sick of this silence. Monday morning feels so bad. There's a lot of unsavory and even criminal activity that goes on in international waters thanks to a lack of government control. But sometimes, something beautiful comes out of it. During the 1960s in the United Kingdom, intrepid DJs would take their radio stations aboard small boats off the British coast and broadcast from international waters. They can't close us down, we're pirates, that's why we're sitting out here in the middle of the friggin' ocean! Well, in the 1960s, the out-of-touch BBC had a total monopoly on radio broadcasting in the UK. The result? In the decade of the Rolling Stones, The Who, and The Beatles, British radio audiences were starved for good music. Enter pirate radio. The stiff upper lip BBC stations were suddenly in serious competition and forced to change thanks to Radio Coraline, London Wonderful, and others who were willing to bring jazz, rock, reggae, and eventually hip hop and R&B to British airwaves. Number four, not all international waters are oceans. Before the age of international diplomacy, landlocked countries fought bloody wars to access the sea. Even today, 48 countries are landlocked and need a way of reaching the ocean. In Europe, the Danube River is a designated international waterway, used by landlocked Austria, Hungary, Moldova, Serbia, and Slovakia so they can get to the Black Sea. It wasn't always this way. Before international agreements on river sharing, the Danube was a tool of war and empire, used by the Romans, Turks, Austrians, and even the Nazis. Today, Europe's second longest river is an example of peace and shared responsibility. Hooray for international peace and order! And that's probably the only example of the rule of law and successful international cooperation in this episode. Fire! Fire! Number three, marine parks might be the key to peace on the high seas. And we're not talking about marine land here. Everyone loves marine land. Over in the South China Sea dispute, six nations are striving to control the same area of international waters, and it could get ugly. But what if nobody took over the South China Sea and everyone agreed to stay out? That means no exploring for oil, no naval exercises, and no military bases. This would create a massive patch of ocean where fish populations can rebound and coral reefs can regrow. The idea dates back to marine biologist John McManus in the early 90s. He argues that having a safe breeding ground for fish like this would mean a bigger catch in the surrounding areas, providing more fish for Southeast Asia. Now that's an idea. Less war, more food. Number two, climate change is redefining international waters. New areas of navigable ocean are opening up on the top of the world and there is no agreement on what to do about it. Because of accelerating climate change, the Arctic Ocean is expected to be ice free every summer as early as 2020. And it's not just scientists who are noticing. Oil and mining companies are drooling at the prospect of seabed drilling and mining. Governments of northern countries, not to mention their militaries, are very interested in who will control drilling, fishing, and shipping rights through the Arctic. Even Canada is caught up in the controversy over the thawing of the Arctic and the Northwest Passage. The Canadian government sees the waters of the Northwest Territory and Nunavut as Canadian, though the rest of the world disagrees. The ice may be thawing, but tensions certainly are not. Number 1. Garbage and pirates are no one's responsibility. I'm sorry. I didn't know pirates were still a real thing. You know you're in a bad neighborhood when criminals roam the streets and the garbage never gets picked up. The ocean is pretty much the worst neighborhood ever. Remember, the point of international waters is that anyone can use them and practically nobody is responsible for them. Take garbage. Because of the currents of the ocean, garbage from boats and runoff from land is carried in a huge circular pattern called a gyre. The Pacific Garbage Patch is a raft of despair the size of Texas, choking unlucky animals passing through. If that wasn't bad enough, piracy still continues in international waters. 
though modern pirates don't wear tricorn hats and multiple scarves. Well, maybe they would if they're affecting some steampunk motif, but that's kind of gaudy. Anyway, technically international law says that any country can stop and punish pirates, and many militaries do exactly that regularly. However, in a lot of ways, it's one of those situations where, since everybody's responsible, nobody takes full responsibility. Execute. Most countries are reticent to prosecute and imprison pirates, so they often just take their gyroscope blunderbusses and Victorian sword canes, or whatever steampunk weapons they have on them, and set them free. You're done. Hang on. Planks. Now I'm done. So, do you think the high seas are a place of limitless adventure and opportunity? Or are you landlubbers who'd rather not get their feet wet in the anarchy of international waters? Are you a pirate? Pirates are in this year? For more piston-powered Polax top 10s and barnacle-encrusted top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. What are you looking at? Back to work!